Hey guys, what's going on? All right, well, solar install is done. You guys have seen those videos already. Um, and everything's working great. Problem I'm having with now, which I figured would be a problem eventually, is the batteries. Now you gotta remember, these two, uh, two, these four 12 volt marine batteries that I put in this rig, um, they're old, they're like five years old, and they're from two different sources. Uh, luckily, they're the same year and the same brand and type, but they've been treated differently their whole lives. Um, they worked well for a year. I mean, I really used the hell out of them for a year, but now what's happening is they're fully charging during the day. And even if I disconnect the coach, they're pretty much 10 volts by morning, which means one of the batteries either has a bad cell or it's just a bad battery. Um, or all of them. I mean, it could be either or. All I know is, let me actually, let me show you. Let me show you what the charge controller looks like now. It's in the sun right now. Um, I have no power in the coach now. What I did was I shut off the, you know, the battery disconnect, um, which still allows the solar to charge the batteries. What that allowed me to do is isolate the problem. Even with the coach disconnected, I'm getting my batteries are draining, they're not holding a charge. So I know that there's no draw. Now I did go circuit by circuit, checking for draw with a multimeter to see just how much amperage, you know, I'm pulling when the coach is at rest. Um, and it wasn't much at all. In another video in the future, I'll do um, how to do that. Yeah, that'll be a good video for the future. Right now, I'm just gonna focus on swapping out these batteries. Um, as you guys know, in a previous video, I purchased eight eight i only have one hand so four plus four uh golf cart batteries i'm only going to install four of them right now in the coach and the reason why i did that was i wanted eight batteries from the same manufacturer the same date code for a future upgrade so what i'm going to do is put four in i'm going to see how those you know work out for me but then later on i'm going to put the other four in as a separate bank so that's why i did that uh, but let me show you the charge controller now. Okay, so right now, you can see that I'm pulling in 22 volts. Battery is at 13.6. Um, pulling in an amp and a quarter, or amp, one and a half amps. It's converting it to 2.2 right now. Uh, but you can see the batteries look pretty good, and it's happy. As soon as I... The, the panels stop producing power, those batteries drop right down to about 10.4. You can see there, the voltage just jumped up to 39, you know, cloud going by, whatever the case may be. Um, so that's how I know it's the batteries. Now, once I get the old batteries out, I'll be able to test them and know which one was bad, yada, yada, but I have four brand new golf cart batteries going in now. So let's get that done. All right, guys, now before we disconnect the batteries it's important to disconnect your solar you never want to connect and disconnect batteries on your solar system without disconnecting the panels first okay and it's one of the important parts of having a a breaker or a fuse in line with your solar panels because you can easily just pull that fuse or trip that breaker and disconnect your solar just the panels themselves on the roof then you go down and disconnect your batteries you always want to hook up your batteries first and disconnect your batteries last. So anytime you work on the system, shut off the solar or disconnect it, however you gotta do it, then disconnect your batteries from the charge controller. All right guys, you can see here, 16.9 volts coming in from the solar right here. Now what I'm gonna do, come over here, you'll see this breaker I've added since the solar video. Uh, remember we talked about whether or not to go with a 30 amp. And I decided that the 30 amp would be fine. The reason why is I'm coming in through this 30 amp breaker at 24 to 35 volts, which means the amperage is low. Um, and then it's the charge controller that actually um, converts it to a higher amp. So 30 amps is more than enough. In fact, it's actually perfect because this is 10 gauge wire and 30 amps is a good match for 10 gauge wire. But before we disconnect the batteries, we have to trip that breaker you see I had both of them tripped but this one's the solar panels and if we come back over to our charge controller you'll see there's no solar the charge controller actually thinks it's nighttime and uh, is not you know 
sensing any solar at all. So now we can disconnect our batteries. All right, guys, this is what my battery box looks like. I always keep a bulb like this here to add water as needed. Uh, makes it easier, especially in the back. Um, you know, you, when you're here and you're, uh, you know, maintaining your batteries and stuff, the easier you make it to maintain, the easier it is, uh, or the more likely you are to maintain them. Um, if I blocked this all in and had to unscrew stuff and everything else to get at my water levels, there's a better chance that I wouldn't even do it. So um, right now I can get to all my battery caps and fill my water without a problem. So I know that's not the problem with this particular uh, time. It's the actual batteries and uh, we're going to remove them. Now I already disconnected the house power. Okay. And then I'm going to start by disconnecting some of the accessories um, like the solar, this is the, the line, this white one here, goes up to the solar charge controller with its own fuse right there. So we'll start disconnecting stuff like that and then take all the batteries out once all these jumper cables, um, you know, that make them run in parallel. Once we take all them out, we'll be able to uh, get the new batteries in. All right. Well, there you have it, four interstate dual purpose uh, HD 24 DPs you can see they're all the same funny thing is these two came out of my pop-up these two came with the rig uh, I have no idea how old they are or um, the date codes are all within I, actually I do know how old they are I just don't know what they've been through um, I found one of them I don't have a it's only giving me about nine volts look at that 9.4 so that's probably my problem battery right there all right as you can see it's much neater now got uh, crisscrossed positive to negative down the center positive to positive on each end so we know we have two 12 volt batteries generally. That's how you would figure it. Once you put them negative to positive and you're running them in series, it becomes like one battery. So you have basically four batteries turned into two batteries and then both of those batteries are wired in parallel to keep the 12 volts. And it's always good to verify with a multimeter. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if I can do this one handed can try so you look you'll see there 12.34 volts okay now that's running the positive off of one battery to the negative across the cross battery and that's how you want to run your system you want to run it balanced I'll put a picture in uh, the video here like right now and as you can see by the picture you can see how there's the small crisscross positive to negatives down the center and on each end positive to positive negative to negative before you hook up the, the camper you always want to make sure with a voltmeter that you're reading the right voltage the last thing you want to do is hook up you know crisscrossed batteries or the wrong polarity or something like that to your converter and to your solar charge controller. So always double check. And we're good. All right, guys, hope you can see that. I'm not sure how much light is getting in there. Um, everything looks good. I have reconnected the solar charge controller as well as the coach itself. Um, the switch is still off. I'm going to go turn on the solar charge controller and just make sure that that's reading correctly uh, before I energize the whole coach. But it looks much neater than the previous batteries. I definitely you know, made sure all the connecting jumpers and stuff are all the right length and everything's balanced. You'll see that the power is being drawn from the, this battery right here and the negative is being connected all the way into the back right.
that's how you balance out the batteries and it this way you're not drawing all from one set of batteries and then the other set would be filling it um i don't know if that makes any sense but i'll try to explain it better in the future but yeah definitely happy with that now i have this piece of angle iron here that i have to just drill a couple holes and that just kind of keeps them from move sliding around in there awesome all right, well, everything looks good here. See, we're reading 12.4 volts. Not quite fully charged, but then again, they're brand new. They've probably been sitting on the shelf for a few months. Not reading any solar, because I have it disconnected still. Again, I can't stress this enough. Always connect your batteries first, then your solar, okay? You don't want solar going into the controller and then connect your batteries. You want to go the other way. So that's what we got now. What we did was connected our batteries. Voltage looks good, 12.3, 12.4. Now we'll engage the solar panels. Inside our command center here, we'll reset the breaker for the solar. And we'll reset the breaker for the accessories that are in here. Now we'll come over here and you'll see that the solar panels are bringing in 21, oh, bouncing up and down, was 21 volts, 28 volts. And you'll see that it's only showing a half of an amp, a little more than half of an amp, but it's converting that all the way over to one and a half amps. Like I said, I'm not in full sun. And there you have it, guys. All oh, looks good. If we push the button for the light control, this one here, you'll hear the Wi-Fi Ranger and other accessories start powering up. That was the Wi-Fi Ranger. You can see here that the Wi-Fi Ranger it's pulling about three tenths of an amp right now. I shut it off, turning the light back on, but it was pulling 3.3 amps. You can see the hot spot is also powering up. All right, well, let's see how this works out. We'll get a charge on those batteries and I'll give you guys an update.